Thank you for joining us today on the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, specifically the tsleil and Squamish nations. Today, we are joined by Anna Binta Diallo, an artist based in Montreal. And in her work, she investigates memory and nostalgia to create unexpected narratives surrounding identity. And she uses collected archival material and images and works in collage, painting, drawing, design, and video. And she's exhibited across Canada and internationally, and she completed the graduate certificate in digital technologies in art and design practices at Concordia University, and a creative practice specializing in video from the TransArt Institute in Berlin. And also really exciting, Anna Binta currently has an exhibition, which you can go and see here in Vancouver, um, at Access Gallery called Wanderings, and it's up until November 14th, so there's still time. Um, and so now with that, I will pass it over to you, Anna Binta. All right, hi, thank you for having me today. Um, I'm speaking to you from my office living room um, from Montreal or Teotiake, the traditional territory of the Kanyana Kehaka. Um, and I'm gonna start my, share my screen to start uh, providing a little bit of a feedback or uh, presentation, sorry, on my process. So just give me a second. All right, share screen. All right. And you can see everything? Yes, yes, looks great. Okay. So, um, hello, hello everybody. My name is Anna Binta Diallo. I'm very happy to be talking to, today, talking to you today about my practice, uh, my work, my creative process, and my tra trajectory as an artist. And I want to thank uh, Emily, Dalen, and Amelia for the invitation to speak to you all today and for inviting me to be your art, virtual artist in residence. Um, it's been very uh, interesting making these videos because I, I'm so much in my studio, in my head sometimes that talking about it and the process of it uh, is also enriching for me because I, I find out what are the steps that I do to make art and um, I'm happy to share those with you all today. So a little bit about myself. I was born in Dakar uh, in Senegal. I grew up in the French Canadian community of Saint Boniface, which is in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I'm currently based uh, in Montreal. Uh, I'm a mixed media artist and my practice, my practice has shifted over the years with the materials I use, uh, but the main conduct, conducting thread has always been collage. So whether it's collage like painting, uh, paper or digital collage, creating videos with a, with a cut and paste aesthetic, I always tend to blend imagery in a non-linear fashion, and that usually defi defies the laws of physics. Uh, my background and my, my first love uh, when I was back in university in my undergrad was painting. Um, and I really loved the idea of becoming a painter, uh, but then I was also torn between my uh, interest in graphic design as well. Um, so in the end, I ended up doing a double major in painting and design because I, I, was, I was interested in elements uh, of both types of, uh, of art making, even though they were very different. Um, so I, I did study design as well. And I thought, I think that the, the fact that I did study design and painting uh, as my majors in my undergrad really kind of helped me figure out how I wanted to make art uh, in the long run. And since I graduated my undergrad, I, I've always kept a design. Uh, I always worked as a freelancer and I always believe that design like art has the power, power to be stimulating, engaging, fresh and relevant. And I've always uh, tried to find innovative, innovative solutions uh, to create fruitful and intelligent design. Um, and I always did that alongside my arts practice. And I think that always influenced how I approach design. Um, and for me, I think because I was working as a designer and as an artist at the same time, I often found myself making 
designs that were more, that were less, um, that kind of blended elements of both. So there was like always, I was always interested in like textures that come from painting or uh, shapes that are very designed. Um, but I think that was always um, an attraction for me. Like how do I make, how do I mix and match both of these different kind of uh, practices together, painting and, and design. And so I, I kind of embraced that in a way in my earlier work. And I'm just showing examples here of like how that came to be in some freelance projects I did over the years. So I've done books, I've done movie posters, I've done uh, music uh, covers for albums back in the day when you can buy CDs. <laughs> um, I did a lot of like CD art. Um, and I, I've also done websites, uh, packaging, and I've also worked part-time as a designer uh, for the David Suzuki Foundation. Um, so there's an office in Vancouver and there's also an office in Toronto and Montreal. And I've been working there since 2013 as a part-time uh, digital specialist. Uh, but most of my work I do there is as a designer. Um, and I, I think that's interesting. I'm mentioning that because although it's not my artistic practice per se, I think working as a designer has also helped my artistic practice. Um, and basically I, I find that I can find inspiration um, in both realms of my, of my work and try and find a co cohesive way of working. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, I think I, I'm just bringing some examples. So I've always maintained this kind of design career um, and the David Suzuki Foundation has always been very uh, supportive of my artistic practice and uh, which I found very good as an artist. It's nice to have um, your employer kind of encourage you to exp expand your horizons. And so I was very happy and lucky. I'm still working there now as a part-time designer. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's interesting to note that, yeah, the the fact that they allowed me to go on residencies and artistic uh, do artistic re research uh, always meant that when I when I would come back to the office, I would always have new ideas that maybe I think weren't necessarily going to be there if I just stayed as a designer doing that kind of work. So I kind of want to go back actually to the my time at Concordia. So after um, after I graduated from my University of Manitoba. Uh, undergraduate. I moved to Montreal. I made the decision to come to Montreal and go to graduate school. Um, and I entered the program at Concordia called Digital Technologies and Art and Design Practices. And this was kind of, again, a mixture between digital technologies and design and then visual arts. It wasn't an MFA, but it was kind of a, a yeah, graduate program, a one-year program. And in that program, I, I decided to do this project called Night Adventures which was basically a, um, a study of my dream. So I, for like six weeks or six months, I kept a dream diary. And based on these entries, I created these designs um, that were made on with handmade drawings. And I used digital image manipulation to render the images. And I think this is the first time where I started to think about how I can use like design and painting and digital images into a conceptual uh, way, in a conceptual manner. And then I also, like I want to use something that was intangible, inta intangible like dreams to create imagery in a physical environment. Um, so I ended up uh, doing an installation and I also created a book of these images. Um, and this was, I think I mentioned this cause this was kind of the early days, it was over a decade ago. And I, I hadn't really figured out like what I want to talk about with my pra practice yet. Uh, here you can see I'm talking about dreams. Um, and I, I really was interested in this idea of, uh, yeah, using narrative to explain things that were difficult to explain, I suppose, like dreams. And then the idea of collaging things together kind of became a mainstay in my practice after that. Um, but this was kind of the beginning of my you know, exploration into this. And a few years later, uh, that was in 2008, 2009, took me a few years to, I was doing some more graphic design and working like that. And then I decided, you know, I think it's probably time that I dig deeper into why I make art. Like, what is it about art that I want to make? 
um, design is one thing, making art for clients or collaborating with other people. Uh, but how can I push deeper into my into myself to find out what really inspires me? And so I, I did my MFA in 2011 um, at Trans Art Institute. And that's when I really began questioning, um, yeah, what is it about art that I want to communicate? And I, I think those that was an important time for me because I, I began questioning a lot of stuff about my own personal life, um, about where my heritage, where how my how my uh, experience growing up as a French Canadian black woman um, born outside of Canada, how do those uh, life experiences influence who I became and how I made art? Um, so I, I started with a very simple question, uh, which was, can we be nostalgic for something we've never known? Um, and I think for my in my case, that was being born in Senegal and not having grown up there. I had this feeling of nostalgia. And so this was kind of just an entry point for me to start thinking about art. Um, so I, I started, you know, looking at how I can create an artwork based on this. So I started looking at collecting photos, archives, um, asking my parents some questions about my family. And it kind of just became this really big project that I was really um, interested in. And it really kind of helped me reboot my practice and give it some... Uh, give it something that I was passionate about. Uh, and it was autobiographical in a way, but it, it helped me kind of articulate what it was that I was trying to say with my art. So I completed my master's in 2013. And then um, I created, yeah, I was starting to ex experiment with collage again and looking at gathering images that were related to my own story and then creating these kind of narratives that uh, were very personal, I think. Um, and I, I was kind of blending uh, fantasies with, uh, I think, a sense of history that uh, I felt I needed to, I needed to connect with um, to, to tell a story. So I tried to offer a glimpse of like how we regard, we look at our own histories and origins. And I invited the onlooker to seek out the relationship of the self to the other. So these were kind of the the artistic um, components, the research components of how I made this art. Um, and I, it started off with collage actually. Um, and then I think maybe midway through my MFA, I realized, okay, I, I have all these ideas, these collages, they're, they're stories I wanna tell. And at this moment, I actually began to shift my practice more into video. Um, so I, I, I started looking at video archives um, and I started collecting videos and really getting into, um, I think for me, I, I, I like to try new uh, ways of working to see if it can help illustrate the theme that I'm looking at. Um, so I dove deeper into my own personal history. I, like I said, I have a paternal, um, a paternal history, a paternal connection to Senegal. Um, and then I also have a maternal link to French Manitoba. Um, and so I started looking at, um, yeah, uh, story, uh, not stories, sorry, books uh, from like family, family tree books, I guess you could say, um, and even archives that existed in Manitoba. And I found out all this information, important information uh, related to my own family. Um, and I, I had no idea that there was, uh, I mean, it was never talked about that we had Multiple, uh, a few indigenous family members in, our, in my family and that my grandfather is actually Métis and we have Cree lineage. And so there was all this kind of self-discovery about my own family. And this, this really inspired me to like dig deeper. And I guess during my thesis, I started working, looking at links between um, indigenous, fa indigenous culture and West African culture. Um, and I started to create this book that was very, um, Basically, it was a, a collection of stories and ideas that were autobiographical, but it was also a way for me to find narratives um, and enter myself into the work by, uh, by showing what I had researched. So that work was, um, it was very important for me and it was very, uh, it's when I realized the importance of our collective history um, and its relevance within my own arts practice.
So this, this is, a, as I mentioned, um, it became my final MFA work, which was um, Negotiations. And it was a book. So like I, I was showing you some uh, images before, it was a book of my research, but I also created um, a, oh, I'm sorry, I have a, I'm hearing some noise. One second. <laughs> Sorry, I had a, somebody ring, rang the doorbell. <laughs> um, so I was saying, yeah, I, I was really interested in creating this document, a book, and then the video that would kind of document my process in creating this, uh, this video that I created, uh, a triptych video that highlighted, um, basically it was my, me looking into uh, my own heritage. So on the left, on the top screen was, uh, me looking on both sides on the left screen was my connection to Sen Senegal. And on the, the bottom right screen was my uh, interpretation of my connection to Canada. And then those are very, I guess, broad ways of saying like, it was me negotiating with my, my own heritage in a video piece um, that uh, is a, it's like a six minute video. And it's, yeah, it's a, uh, it has sound and everything. So I, I, I was really interested into this kind of conveying the images uh, in video and moving and using sound to illustrate these discoveries that I was making. And I was able to show this work uh, in 2016 um, at the May, Montréal Art Interculturel. And the show, the show actually was a good, a good opportunity for me to show um, the work that I've just shown you um, in one space. So it kind of became like a an opportunity to have all the work interact with each, with each other because they were all different works, but they all kind of came from the same research and the same uh, personal investigation. So that, that was in 2016. And after that, so I had done collage video and um, I was lucky to be uh, able to go to the Bath Center for a residency there. And I had finished my MFA. I was very, um, like, I was very excited to make new work. And because I had done such um, a lot of work, like doing video editing and technical stuff, I was kind of really excited to go back to doing something a bit more uh, analog. So I, I was trying to find work that, you know, I knew that I liked the aesthetic of collage and I knew that I used that within my videos, but I was also hoping to find ways to make new work. And so I kind of went back to um, collage and cutting things out of magazines and books. And this was again, a way to just kind of jumpstart my creative process. Um, and I think I took advantage of the Bass Center's resources that were there at the time, um, which they had nice printers and uh, like great scanners and things. So I, I just started experimenting to see what would come from this work. Um, and I didn't really know, I didn't go in there knowing exactly what would happen after my uh, MFA, but I, I kind of just went with it. And what, I, what ended up happening was I made um, kind of these collages, these, this, again, these digital collages. So I started off analog but in the end, I ended up printing out these collages that I, uh, I did digitally. And I think I had a lot of fun um, doing this kind of decoupage um, and exploring as much as I could with compositions. And I think I was also interested in maybe moving away from something that was so personal to me um, and just looking at stuff that was already there, uh, like things that were maybe related to me, but weren't necessarily about me. Uh, necessarily. So I, I had a lot of fun cutting up things, scanning them, printing them, and then just uh, having, you know, making a new body of work. Um, and so in this body of work, I was, it became clear that I was really in, interested in these kind of imagined communities um, where certain members uh, don't necessarily have opportunities to interact face to face. Um, so I was like reading stuff from Benedict Arnold and Homi Baba, who questions identity, national affiliation, cultural hybridity, and the notion of being in between. So this kind of became um, the in-between series, 
um, as I was saying earlier. So it was like this, it kind of took form. Um, and I think I was, uh, yeah, I was, I, it was a new way of working for me. It was like, it kind of reminded me of video, but at the same time it was still collage and it was a way of printing things out, um, juxtaposing images appropriated from, yeah, the, the things I cut out, but I also started including things from the internet. And I think I, my visual language evolved a lot from like my earlier collages. And um, it was a very uh, exciting time for me at the time because I, I didn't know, yeah, I, I, I kind of didn't go there with any expectations of what I was gonna make. And then I, I, I left there thinking, okay, I have a new direction now. Um, and it was, yeah, again, I started, I started doing these collages, which at times I would um, add in some personal archives and photos if it, it justified the work. Um, and I, I think this is when I realized that through this work, I wanted to do things that were like bigger than just myself, something that I was trying to articulate for a long time. And I think I may not have been able to do that had I not gone through all the steps before, which were like looking at my own heritage, looking at my own culture and how, what shapes who we are. Um, and I think what I was trying to do is um, link my story to a larger universal, universal story that isn't only about me, but about many communities. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I wanted to invite the audience to look beyond my own experience and also maybe see themselves and enter the work with their own filters. Um, and so, yeah, I think I also started looking at um, the palimpsest and this word came, kept coming up to me as this like a parchment that is erased after each use so that it can be reused. Um, and I started thinking about this as a conceptual um, framing for my next body of work. Um, and I think I think it's still there uh, in the way I work right now. And it's this it's kind of like this idea that you always I, you can remix what already exists. Um, and I think this kind of drives my practice back then and still now. Um, and yeah, I, I, I after the, the series of collages I just showed, I started thinking about other ways of using collage and remixing ideas. And I, I did some painting, I did some painting on, uh, some painting on prints. Um, and cause I asked myself, can the man, what is the manuscript of the palimpsest? Can it be the web? Is it our history books? Uh, is it television commercials, personal photographs, and or is it memories? So I, I basically uh, tried to revive this idea of the palimpsest and again, experimented with painting on photos or painting on digital prints. And I was using this material process as a metaphor for the palimpsest um, by remixing stories. Yeah, and just trying to find out what this, the next narrative of my work would be. And I think, um, yeah, I, I've already shown a little bit of some, I've shown some photos of the show at the May and I can play a little bit of like a zoom on that and this so this show kind of took all the prints that I made all the collages I made and all the videos I made up to that point um, and put them all together in a cohesive installation um, and it, it, it weaved together collages painting prints audiovisual installations and it kind of presented to the audience like my own symbolic visual language um, and I think uh, the, the primary lens of this work was really the African diaspora and the indigenous communities and my own personal look and my own culture. Um, and I think it was the first time where I, I could see all these different projects uh, come together into one story or many different stories, but in one cohesive way. Um, and I felt this was like a nice, uh, it was almost like a nice retrospective on what I had done to that point in 2016. So that's um, along with, after that, uh, I, I, um, I was invited to participate in a show in Berlin called Geographies of the Imagination. And um, yeah, I think this was another turning point for me in how I look at collage. Um, and they had invited me actually to take all the collages that I had made previously and 
they were interested in, uh, because the show was called Geographies of the Imagination, they were, they were really interested in how my work kind of captured this imagined, ter this, this imagined territory um, that I had created with these collages. And they want to bring that into this group exhibition. And so I amalgamated all the previous collages and I installed them um, at the gallery uh, in this, sorry, it's a kind of a bad photo, but uh, just to show that it was plastered all over this wall um, in this gallery. And the gallery was actually at the time in a crematorium <laughs> uh, in Berlin, which is very strange, but it was, uh, they've moved now, but so the, it was a very loaded kind of space where I had to show, um, but it kind of shifted me, my, my way of thinking again. Um, I think, the physicality and the symbolic way of the space gave the work new meaning. So I was in a basement of a crematorium. Um, there was no natural light. And it was just like, I plastered this space with these collages. But then I thought, I'm like, I thought to myself, what if the next project um, was not just like a print in a frame or, uh, you know, a collage on a, a full collage on a wall or just a video on a monitor. Um, and I really began to think about space more uh like i started thinking more about space and sculptural elements and how to make things how to bring things out of the wall and how could i how would i be able to um collage an entire space um if you will so i yeah i left berlin thinking about those things and then happily i was very excited to be accepted again at the banff residence uh, as a at the uh banff center for another residency, uh, I always find whenever I go, I've gone to the Banff Center three times now, and each time I go, it's very, um, it's a really good time to uh, sort of reboot your practice or get new ideas, make new connections. Um, sorry, I'm just having a sip of water. <laughs> and so I went to the Banff Center a third time, and um, I went there with this 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 idea that I want to. Uh, look into more into space, uh, collaging space. And, and I was thinking, you know, we're living in a global world, we're traveling. Uh, and then I was thinking a lot about folk stories, um, which travel, which wander a lot. And having, you know, have looked deep into my own mixed heritage uh, in the past work, I was really interested in widening my scope. Um, and hope and hoping to incorporate new stories and perspectives into the dialogue to discover the affinities and tensions between my own personal mythologies and uh, those of other cultures. So that's kind of how I went into the the next phase of my work. Um, and I'm just showing this because as a freelancer, I was also working with, uh, I, have, I had been hired to create like a wallpaper for uh, for a hotel for a hotel lobby as a designer, so it was just to show, just to bring that up because it was um, a moment where I was like working a lot with more spaces um, in my design work, but not necessarily in my artwork. Um, so I was trying to figure out how to bring that together conceptually and physically. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, conceptually, I was looking at uh, folk stories and how uh, we all as you know it's it's a way for our select for all civilization civilizations to tell stories about their own people or their people or our people and i started looking at different uh areas um points i i, I started zooming into folk stories and I, I started where i was comfortable uh so places of my own mixed heritage so french canadian folk stories or french or west african folk tales and i also start to expand um a little bit because I, I had been invited to present some artwork in finland um and so i started looking at uh finnish uh, mythology so kalevala um and i started looking at just a variety of things and then i, I noticed you know a lot of these folk stories had some similar similarities um, and the, the themes that kind of came up from this research were issues of, yeah, uh, displacement, mig migrants, racism, um, ge geographical borders, and even uh, uh, issues of climate change. Like all these kind of issues were sort of coming out naturally from just looking at folk stories. Um, so I, I became very interested in that. And then I, I decided like, how am I gonna start 
building this project out. Um, there's so much information here, but I, I started with a sketch and I think the sketch was like, I'm gonna collage a space. Um, here are my characters um, or what will the character, who will the characters be? How will they um, be in space? Uh, and then I, I, I also thought about using projection um, maybe. Um, and you know, I was, in, I was at the Banff Center for six weeks, five weeks, I think. So it's not a lot of time, but it was a, a good time to kind of turbo, turbocharge my creative uh, pro process. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I just started going with this idea of folk stories and I started creating these stories, uh, these characters that were from these stories. Um, and I started creating them digitally. Um, so I would like uh, illustrate them and then, and then import them into my digital uh, programs. And then um, I started filling them up with uh, collage remnants that I had collected uh, during my time researching these folk stories. Um, and I would start uh, filling up the characters with stories again. So the work kind of um, evolved naturally in that way, in that sense. And because I, I was lucky to be at the Banff Center, I had amazing, um, you know, printing. Uh, I was able to explore with printing very fast and just be able to put stuff up in my studio and just kind of go with that. Um, so I started printing out a lot of these, um, these characters. And then I also experimented with, um, you know, sculpture for the first time, which I had never done before. Um, so I started um, figuring out how I could bring these characters outside of the wall space. Um, so I, I really started looking at that. And um, I was, yeah, so it really was a point in my practice where I was able to uh, synthesize many elements of my experience as a designer, as a, a painter, as a collage artist. And now I was, now I was bringing in sculpture, um, which was a new element. Um, so that was a, a, a great um, moment for me to kind of see that I could do new things with the same ideas, I guess, not the same ideas, but the same principles of collage and cutting and pasting. Um, and I was, uh, yeah, I, I felt like I was going on a new direction. Um, and I think for me, the, the density of the old collages where it was like a full, a full, um, full page of, you know, sometimes like, yeah, it would be a full print with tons of imagery. I think at this point I was more interested in uh, leaving some space around the imagery and leaving some time to think and to breathe. Um, and yeah, just having some fun with this idea that I can rearrange um, some of this work um, and that the, it wasn't static anymore and it could move around and there was movement. Um, and I, I also noticed that these characters, once if you move them around in space, they would it would tell a different story um, depending on what angle you were looking at it. Um, so there was all these different perspectives that kind of came out from it. And um, I think this is kind of where my work sits now. Um, it's been showing, across, yeah, there's an exhibition in Vancouver and um, there's, uh, this work is, was shown in Toronto and uh, I've had a, like a good reception to this work. Um, and I think for me, it was a nice moment to see that um, the ideas that I were that I was uh, that I went there with, I was able to succeed them by just experimenting and trying things out and having support from the band center and uh, people who were knowledgeable and helping me with bringing up um, creating these sculptures. Um, and so, yeah, it was a a good moment of rediscovery, uh, regener <laughs> regenerating my art practice in a different way. Um, but I think uh, in the end, it was still um, it's, I think it was something that I was trying to do for a long time and it kind of, I needed to do the previous things before that to get to, to a point where I can create this kind of body of work. Um, another sip of water. <laughs> so as I mentioned earlier, um, I had been invited to show some of this work in Finland and, um, and because of the pandemic, the I, I was unable to go travel there, but I was supposed to go there to do a residency and re research the folklore of Finland and create some artworks for that space. So unfortunately I was obviously not able to go to Finland, but I was still 
um, able to create the work for that show. Um, and so I did that all from home, from my own, from my Montreal uh, pandemic studio office. And I think for me, it was a nice escape actually from everything that was going around. 